Hey, what's up YouTube? It's Ko Tetsu Steel here. Today we're playing Thea, The Awakening. Now this is a roguelike turn-based survival strategy game that is set in kind of like a post-apocalyptic... Is it post-apocalyptic? Maybe. And uh, it has a focus around Slavic mythology and Slavic uh, like gods and stuff like that. Uh, so it's a really, really interesting idea and I really am excited to hop into this so let's go ahead and start a new game so when we start off first thing uh, we get two of these gods randomly um, it really is random which ones you get like if I were to play this and you were to play this you might get two completely different gods to start off with um, you unlock the other ones by getting to I think level three or something with a certain god yes it will randomly unlock another one. So we have these two to choose from right now. So the god of sun and heavenly fire. The first son of Perun. I feel like I've heard of that before. Um, dual goddess of the morning and evening stars, the Aurora. I kind of like this guy. Like if I were to be a leader of a whole bunch of people, I would probably be this guy. Just saying. Um, so we'll go with that. And... Over here we have bonuses for uh, our god is only level 1, so during the day all your villagers get a plus 2 bonus to damage and range damage. What does she get? Uh, they all get plus 1 damage or plus 1 bonus to armor. Uh, we'll go with Savarog. Savarog? I'm, I'm sorry if I'm butchering the language. I really know English and Japanese, so can't really do much for other languages. Um, but down here, gameplay options, this is where you kind of choose a little bit of, uh, if you play like Civilization and stuff like that, you can change like the world size and stuff like that, but nothing really crazy right now is going on. Um, let's see, we can have our village focus be either warriors, gatherers, or craftsmen. Um, I feel like warriors is probably a decent bet to start off with because I don't know like all the ins and outs of the game. But, uh, you know, let's start playing. The God of Sun and Heavenly Fire, the first son of Perun. Perun? That's where I know it from. It's from Destiny, Perun's Fire. Ha! I remember. Um, when the darkness came, it took, it almost took your life, filling your very being with its curse. But you held on to life and fell down to Thea to protect those of your worshippers. Those of your worshippers still live. That seems strange, that sentence. Providing small rays of sunshine and warmth for as long as you could, you ensured their safety. You know not how the sun finally returned, but now that it has, you must shine a light of hope and blast the way for your people and for Thea. Thea? Thea. Thea. Alright. Thea has awakened. Welcome! No time to waste. You are a deity of the High Pantheon, and you must help your worshiper survive the darkness. So what now, you ask? You are a goddess slash god, yes, but you have little power. So I guess the thing is, is that um, we were stripped of our powers. And so you will know the world through your people's eyes. This means sometimes you will encounter your own divine messengers and maybe even face your own avatars. Weird, I know. Your first mission is to survive. Every bloody critter is trying to make sure you stay down. So get food and craft better equipment to protect yourselves. You will guide your people to victory, either by sheer survival and progress, or by solving the cosmic, cosmic tree's mystery. Who's talking to me? Um, I'm but a messenger. Theodore, you can call me. But let us focus on you. Thea is a broken land. The underworld is shut, and the undead roam the earth, and the creatures of darkness that ruled for a century want you dead. So I need to improve my village and stuff, huh? First, go and explore your village, check your inventory to see your stocks, and set people to gather food and fuel, like wood. Without food, people will starve, and without fuel, they will not craft or even heal, so those are very important. I can understand. Um, yes, once you've visited your vis village, check out the people standing outside the exploring party. Select your party and send them to me. I will wait for y your people outside the village. I've marked your people's map with a big blue question mark so that they will see where I am. Oh, and do you ever forget what your current task is? Just check out your logbook. Okay, 
Ooh, we got one experience for existing. So, um, map navigation, yeah. I don't think this is too much different than some certain other games. Um, we'll select on you, and we can make you go... Are we going to here? Is that what we're doing? Or are we going here first? Why don't we go here first? What's here? Um, no, okay. Select our village. And then we'll open this to open up village management. Okay, so we need gatherers. Um, oh, here's the available villagers. Is th this their level and stuff, I guess? Yeah, looks like it. So, um, let's have... Oh, how do we... Can we make them do things? Oh, we need some wood. There we go. That's how it works. Toss you in there. And we'll need some food, too. So we'll toss you like that. I mean, should I... Maybe I'll have... No, I think I'll have you be on the vegetables as well. Okay. Click to set this task to auto-repeat. Yeah, let's do that. Um... Maybe we'll just have you do one vegetable. No, we'll have you do a many. Um, and then craft. What do we want to craft? Clothes? Yeah, we can do that. Um, oh, we have to actually put the materials in here. Interesting. Okay. And then... Hey, get back in there. Why? Oh, we put it down here. How do we... Sure, I guess. And we'll have you do that. Uh, I did click confirm, right? Right? Remember to click quick. <laughs> okay, so we'll end our turn. Oh, there's spiders. Undead spiders. Now, did that end my turn, or...? Let's see, did they gather anything? Um, I don't know if it looks... So let's search location. You stumble across some ruins of an old city engulfed in mist and mi mist and mystery. I was going to say misery. Four options unavailable. Interesting. So we'll search it. You open one of the buildings. A strange looking stone and metal built affair. And you hear a clunking noise, then a blunt thud. Within seconds, the street... Streets of the city are filled with walking skeletons. Oh, um, so we have started a challenge with one skeleton and four rats. Let's, I don't want to auto-resolve. I want to see how combat works. Okay, so it looks like I heard about this where we have... Okay, so, yeah, we have cards. So, uh, welcome to the card mini game. Please pay close attention to this tutorial as the mechanics are fairly complex. If you feel confident enough to play on your own, you may keep this tutorial window open for reference or reopen it from that. To win, you need to eliminate all your opponent's cards. All right. Your deck is made up of your party members. The stats, damage type, and tactical skills from come from their equipment and skills. Um, your deck is divided into two hands. Offensive hand on the left, tactical hand on the right. You'll begin with a preparation phase. This is where you play your cards. The fight phase comes after all cards are played. This number shows how many cards you can play this turn. I can play two, apparently. Um, each card is characterized by two very important values. Attack and defense. I feel like playing Magic the Gathering. Attack deals damage, with lowering the defense of the attacked card. When defense reaches zero, that card is eliminated. The characters may have different types of attacks. Uh, or, yeah, depending on the weapon or special skills. Some attacks may have additional effects, such as poison or leech. In fight challenges only, your wounds will be carried over from the challenge and can lead to death of the characters. Mm -hmm. Offensive cards are for direct attack and are placed on the battlefield using the card's initiative. Or the card's initiative depends on the order it entered the battlefield. Some weapons and skills can modify that. 
Tactical cards offer support. They can only be played using their skills. What? Support actions will affect an eligible card with the least initiative. Hmm. When both, of you, when both you and your opponent pass a turn without playing any cards, fight phase begins. Fight phase is resolved according to initiative left to right. Uh huh. So the card on the left attacks first. Cards always attack the closest enemy on either side randomly. Once cards have no target on the battlefield, damage is dealt to remaining cards and hands and discard pile. In the first fight phase uh, does not conclude the challenge. Second, okay. Uh, if both fight phases do not conclude the challenge, either new preparation phase begins. Oh dear lord, that is a mouthful. So what do we got here? I feel like I'm gonna die no matter what happens to me here. So. Well, okay, why did we get, oh, he got plus six from some kind of, and then can I, like, increase the defense value of your most recently played offensive card. Okay. Oh, I'll get to choose. Okay. So I get to choose from all of these. What does this do? Opponent's most recently played attack. Okay, loses its attack in the... Three attack? Loses three attack? Is that what the deal is? Um, allows character to move from tactical to offensive play. Now let's go ahead and... Mm, let's protect ally. Alright, looks like... Uh, I think that's all we can do, so we'll forfeit further move. It's not like I can do anything else. Can I? No, I can't do anything else, right? No? Right? Okay. Not a rat. Okay, so we'll toss you up in there. Uh, so this is the preparation phase, I guess, and then so we'll toss you up in there and I don't know what I want to do here. Um, I think I'll just confuse. Yeah, why not? Did I even do anything? I don't know if it did anything. Anyway. So... There's a lot of critters. Uh... How's this gonna work? Can I attack? <laughs> I can surrender. Sure. Fight phase one out of two. Okay, so you hurt me a little bit. I wrecked you. So donezo. <laughs> okay, I can't even hurt you because you're... Oh, there we go. Oh, wow. Wow, you guys got destroyed. Okay, so you search the buildings and discover a supply store still intact. So we got some, we got pavis, um, a sharp stone leg, some meat it looks like, yeah, sandstone, some leather which is good, take the stuff and leave this place. Hey, all right, um, is everybody, can we go back here to heal? Is that a thing we can do? Because I would like to do that, I don't want to. How is everything going in in town here? Okay, probably be a good idea to construct something. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to gather. And 
we're gonna wait Maya is the only one that can't build things <laughs> so um, we'll take this lady off this and go back construct pasture do we have enough we have nowhere near enough never mind <laughs> All right, well, I think I'm going to go ahead and call the episode here, and we'll go ahead and hop over to the tutorial. Do we need to do the tutorial? I mean, we could just go around and kill some stuff if we wanted to. What's up here? Oh, enemy spotted. Choose research. Oh, hey. Um, gold? I don't know if we need to care about bone. Clay. Quartz. Scaled leather. Fur. Man, there's just a whole bunch of stuff that I don't even know what this is going to do for us. I guess we'll go... what is this? Amber? It'll go... It, mm, steel? Add 10 units of this research resource to your settlement's inventory and reveal at least one place where it can be gathered. Um, I don't know if I need that for anything though. Yeah, I... I'll think about this. Alright, well I'm going to go ahead and call the episode here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, go ahead and like this video if you enjoyed it and enjoy the game and comment down below and subscribe to the channel if you have not yet done so. And I will see you guys next time.